awkward. Look how good Bowie. Look how awkward he looks. You okay. can speed it up a bit. Is it going? Yeah. Here goes it. Go. Hey, Zach. Hey, Tara. <laughs> Why are we freezing our asses off in South Dakota? <laughs> Because South Dakota is one of three states that does a really great job of catering to people that travel full-time. It took us maybe 20 minutes to establish residency in South Dakota. We now have South Dakota uh, driver's licenses. It's fantastic. It was an incredibly easy process. Um, all they you know, really require is one night stay at a local campground. Um, you need to you know, cut off your ties to the other state that you're moving from, which we did. and. Um, yeah, it was great, and uh, they, we didn't have to explain any weirdness to them, they knew exactly what we were trying to do, we explained that we're full-time travelers, and they said, oh, okay, here you go, and they listed all the stuff you need. It was super easy. Um, so we originally planned to be in South Dakota for maybe four days while we did all of that, but it turns out it's not the bus that's giving us issues, it is the Subaru. We bought a Subaru in Colorado and to an drive it behind the bus, which we did on the way up here, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But in an effort not to register the car in both Colorado and South Dakota and have to pay both fines, or both fees, uh, we elected to let, use temp tags in Colorado and get plates in South Dakota. Which I thought was a really smart idea. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, we, we um, uh, basically, South Dakota requires the original title document, paper title, and we don't have it uh, because it's being financed, and so um, it takes four to six weeks to get that document here, do all the other paperwork, and then get our tags. So four days turned into four weeks. When it happened, when we learned about that, we were like, oh my god, we're supposed to be on our way to Alabama. We're, it was so cold when we got here, we were afraid that uh, we were going to get stuck in the middle of winter, and we weren't exactly sure what to do, but as it did in Wyoming, things worked themselves out. Uh, we're still here, we're still waiting on the title, but the weather has cleared up dramatically and uh, we're really enjoying ourselves. Fortunately, we're getting to stay here and uh, explore the Black Hills area in South Dakota and it's absolutely something we beautiful. Mm -hmm. We got to go see Mount Rushmore. It took two attempts because the first time it was just so incredibly foggy that you couldn't even see it. It was ridiculous. Um, we've gotten to do a lot of hiking and stuff. It's, I'm actually kind of glad that we're stuck here for the time yeah, being. Yeah, and again, it's it's the same thing as in Wyoming. We're making the best out of a bad situation, and it's been great. It's we're, <laughs> I think that's going to be the norm. We're going to make plans, their plans are going to get ruined, but we're still going to be able to have fun. And we can't make plans. Just can't make plans, I don't think. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> that's why we're here, and um, it got, uh, so as far as how cold it's been, when we first got here, uh, it was we were staying at a campground, and for four days I think, and it was in the 20s and 30s pretty much for four or five days straight. Which was manageable. Yeah, and was we fun. were also at the campground. We were paying for electric, so why not use it? So we had the wood stove going and a little electric space heater. Yeah, and between the two of them, we got it up to 81 in here when it was like 30 outside. It was a little, like, we had to remove layers, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, Since then, yeah. we have moved to some free BLM land, which is great. It's beautiful, we're saving money, but obviously we don't have that luxury of the electric anymore, so we're only using the wood stove. And it's been solid for us. It's been really good. There was one night, though, that uh, the Weather Channel said it was going to get down to 20 outside, and we were like, oh, okay, that's cold. Um, it actually ended up getting down to 9 where we were, at least... Uh, we, we think overall it was probably around 11 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but uh, 9 degrees is what our outside thermometer said, and uh, everything froze. Our water tanks that we placed inside under the bed so they wouldn't freeze, they, froze. they still froze. <laughs> um, our pump froze, the water filter froze. The we had an icicle coming out of our faucet. And we, had, we insulated everything. Like yeah. We made sure, we did our best to make sure this wasn't going to happen, but we were not prepared for 9 degrees. So um, I think if I had been a little bit better at working the wood stove, I could have kept it going all night and it would have been warmer in here. Um, but uh, we're still learning how to use it. We're still figuring that out. And uh, fortunately, everything, once everything thawed, it was perfect. It was and fine. all that said, I don't want you to worry about the babies. No, um, no, we were, we were warm. The dogs were warm. We've been letting Tuco sleep with us. He's a great little space heater himself. It's the only thing he's good at. So with it being so cold, we decided to take a few measures in the bedroom to make sure that we stay warm. 
Um, one of the things we've been doing, even though this bed is way too small for it, we're letting Tuco sleep up here while it's really cold because it keeps him warmer and honestly he's great at keeping us warm. Because we did that though, we decided that sleeping bags would be a good idea because he would pull the covers off of us and we would be shivering in the night. So sleeping bags, big comfy comforter, lots of extra blankets, and we put Reflectix in the windows back here. And after that, our wool curtains actually do a pretty good job. And we stay pretty warm back here, so the problems aren't with us being warm. So our primary heat source is our Cubic Mini Grizzly. Uh, it's a wood-burning stove. It can burn coal, wood, as well as pressed wood logs, and it's been really good for us. Uh, we've really enjoyed it. It's kept us nice and cozy, uh, except on the most chilly of nights, and I chalk that up to user error more than anything else. We get a lot of questions asking if we can keep it going all night, and the answer is no, at least not right now. Uh, but again, I, I don't really chalk that up to a deficiency in the stove. I chalk that up to us really not knowing how best to do that yet. We're still learning. Um, but so far, it's, it's been pretty easy, and uh, during regular nights, regular use, it really puts out a nice amount of heat. It does heat up the whole bus front to back really well. That's aided by this fan from EcoFan. It's really neat, actually. Uh, it's a heat-powered fan, uh, and what it does is it takes cold air from behind it, warms it up, and pushes it out, and sort of helps circulate the warm air throughout the bus. Uh, obviously, this is the hottest part of the bus right here in the main cabin. Uh, but the bedroom also gets really nice and cozy and warm, I think uh, in large part because of this and also because we used spray foam insulation. The front of the bus also gets warm. When we supplement the stove with an electric heater when we're at a campsite, we've gotten it up to 81 degrees in here when it was like 30 degrees outside. So a 50 degree temperature swing, not so bad. When we're using just the stove, we can easily expect at least a 30 degree temperature swing. If we get it really hot, we can, we can do 40. Um, we can tell how hot the stove is by this other little accessory. It is a, um, a Rutland burn indicator. Uh, and so this is magnetic. It sits on top of the stove itself and uh, it does a really good job of telling you how hot the stove is getting, which is useful information because if it's too hot, then you sort of run a risk of creating a chimney fire. Uh, if it's too uh, cold, or if it's not warm enough inside, you're at risk of creating a lot of creosote and you have to clean your chimney out more often. Uh, we have cleaned our chimney out once. Uh, I don't know what a normal amount of creosote is. We had a little in there, nothing crazy. Uh, and that was when we weren't really getting it up to temperature or what I think is a proper temperature. But uh, we're really loving it so far. It's been great. <laughs> weather, weather outlook is Nice. Really good right Really now. nice. It's actually fall. It's so. properly fall here. We were afraid we hit winter and it wasn't going to change. Um, but it seems winter, from what we've read, winter really seems to come in November. And uh, so we might hit the, the very beginning of it, but hopefully we'll be headed southeast before that really happens. So anyway, all that to say, things are good and uh, we'll keep exploring. We'll keep exploring.